This is Cadillac Unscripted on 107.9 CDY. It is sponsored by Independent Bank. Katie Huckle, happy fourth anniversary. Happy anniversary, partner. Four years. We talked about this for years about doing this show. We did. And then four years ago, we finally got it going. And uh, over the years, we have talked to the Footlighters a lot. Oh, and my we're goodness. we're going to do it again this morning. They are one troop of talented folks, and they're with us this morning. Welcome. We have Jay Simon. Hi, Rich. <laughs> Hi, Jay. We have Brandon Peltier. Nice to see you. Thanks for having us. Julie Van Heitzma. Hello. And Kelly Johnson. Hello. And we're talking about Noises Off. I cannot wait to hear about this show. Let's start with the set. And let's start with Julie. Tell us about what we, as patrons, as your patrons, can look forward to. Well, this is probably the biggest set set build that they've done in a long time okay. um, that I can remember at least. It's a two-story set uh, and it has to flip all the way around. So for the first act we're watching the show from the front, second act you're watching it from the back with what happens behind the scenes. It has three staircases yes. I think um, and uh, nine doors. Derek is a busy fellow. Yes, he is. Yes, he's he's pretty amazing. We're we're very blessed to have Derek um, as part of our group because he loves challenges like this. He had always said if we ever did noises off, he wanted to build the set. So okay. he was pretty much hooked in from the beginning. Incredible, and you've got a new space to build your sets we in. We do. Our building is is amazing in terms of space uh so we were he was able to build the set in our new space um and we were able to kind of rehearse on it while it was being built which was really nice except for the second floor because you know, <laughs> we didn't want to lose anybody before right. Right. before we were ready to perform but um and he built it in the space but then he had to take it all apart and so we could move it to the auditorium in McBain and rebuild it there. But I just, I got a really cool video that they sent me of them spinning the whole thing around on the stage so it fits and it turns all the way around. And awesome. it's gonna, that alone is probably worth the price of admission. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Um, who's directing? So Amy Peltier and I are co-directing this one. Okay. Um, and we have a good team of tech people and other people helping us out. But mm -hmm. yeah, it's Amy and I, which is fantastic because we all know Amy has an amazing sense of humor and a lot of wit and timing. So that has been a huge asset with this show because it's so funny. How many shows have you directed? I mean, I don't want to pin you down, but oh, if, give, give me a general number. I, I mean, for Footlighters? No, total. Oh, in my whole life? Yeah. Over... Th 30 Incredible. or 40 maybe wow yeah wow um i want to i want to talk to dr peltier for a minute here how how do you do um receiving direction from your wife <laughs> <laughs> there, there was a little bit of a debate about that earlier um are you going to tell the truth here yes or? actually i think i am because if I don't, she'll get mad. Um, I am I am much better at taking direction from Julie. I, I, I will be the, the first truth. to admit it. Uh -huh. um, there actually have been some things that Amy have told, has told me, and I haven't listened as well as I should, and she told Julie to tell me, and then apparently I listened. Uh -huh. So I think that's just because maybe he pushes back for his wife a little more than me that okay. could maybe. be and this is this is her second directing and she's never been an actor and so i have ideas <laughs> <laughs> it's not like she hasn't written plays of her own or anything i mean i can completely understand where you're coming from the whole we need to clarify thing. that everything that amy has tried to direct brandon is something that i would have directed as well. Okay. So it's not like she doesn't know what she's talking about. Oh, I see. I see. I see. She's it's just not be so loud. <laughs> we have given that note several times. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's, what did you say? You you were able to project. Yes. That yeah. is my skill. That okay. is my gift. Listeners, he's about 14 feet away from the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Jay, tell us about, Julie said it's a farce. Can you tell us a little bit about the show without you know, being a spoiler alert here? Oh, I'll, I'll spoil it. What do I care? I'm not the director. <laughs> no, it's a, <laughs> it's a, it's a, uh, it's a, it's a play within a play. So what you're watching is a group of actors rehearsing a play. 
Uh, that play is called Nothing's On. No idea why. Um, and so what you get a chance to see is, if you've got any sort of background in theater yourself, there'll be a lot of things that you find hilarious just because you'll recognize stuff, right? Sure. Um, but it's funny because the, the, the three acts are uh, their final dress rehearsal, uh, a show about a month later, and then kind of the, one of their last shows is act three. And so you get to see the interactions between the characters and the actors. You get to see the, the dynamic of stuff when, when things start to go a little bit wrong at various times, how they deal with that. The whole second act is hilarious and something I, I've never experienced personally. Because as Julie mentioned, the, the whole set gets turned around and you're looking at it backstage. And it will literally look like the backstage of a set. And the actors, when the play starts, will go through the doors and act to the other side where there are no patrons. And what you're seeing as the audience member is the backstage antics. So as people come back through the set and see things happening and everybody's running around and trying to do all that without talking, it's, it's one of the most challenging things I've ever had to do as far as rehearsing because you're, it's almost like a choreography. It's almost like a dance because you have to time your movements, quote unquote, backstage with what's happening, quote unquote, front stage. Are those air quotes going through the ra- <laughs> when I do that, Rich? Are you, can people see? We have no webcam. Dang I'm it. Sorry to inform so, you. You have to time all that stuff so that the as the actors are saying what they're saying from from the play standpoint, um, with what you're doing backstage. And it's it's just hilarious. It it really is. And it's and it's a different, it's very different. Again, I've only been with Footlighters about six years now, but it's very different from anything I've seen us do before because what you're, the primary action you're seeing in Act Two, there's no talking. It's mm-hmm. it's all pantomiming. We're we're just running around like chickens with our heads cut off, <laughs> and it's it's hilarious. So from it sounds a, physical. Yes. Oh, oh my gosh, it's very physical. <laughs> Gratefully, I was not cast in the role that requires the most physicality. That's uh, that is reserved for our president Joseph Bauman. Okay. Uh, if you've ever wanted to see Joe. Get hurt. <laughs> <laughs> Get hurt might be the right way to describe that, <laughs> Kelly. Uh, uh, the, don't you care. don't you don't want to miss this. You don't want to miss this. It's mm. it's funny stuff. We're gonna laugh, huh? Oh, oh yeah. God, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> the the most common name that I've heard used in association with Noises Off is Carol Burnett. Um, very uh, starred in that in in the seventies, right? Yes. Uh, yeah. So so give us some of the backstory about Noises Off, Julie. Boy, I hope I do it justice because I'm not sure I know as much as I should about this. I uh, I usually leave that to Amy. <laughs> but anyway, she's not here. That's my excuse. No, it it is known as one of the funniest plays ever written, if not the funniest play ever written. Obviously, it's set in England, um, so there's also different accents throughout this show. And some of the the characters, the Carol Burnett character, um, is Mrs. Clackett. She has a Cockney accent when she's acting in the show, but when she's herself, the actress, she has a more proper British accent, and that's played by Meg Santangelo. Um, and it's a hard act mm-hmm. to come after Carol Burnett because right. there's a certain physicality that Carol Burnett is famous for, mm-hmm. um, but Meg does a pretty good job of bringing her own little twist to it and mastering the two different accents. And um, she had a great audition, so it was pretty obvious to us right from the start that uh, Meg had to play that character. But there's some other big names in there, John Ritter. Um, Steve Reeves? Uh, Christopher Reeves. Reeves. Christopher Reeves, 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 Reeves and Michael Caine. Oh uh, that's Brandon's character, I think, was played by Michael Caine in the, the movie. So it's hopefully people will catch on that the movie, which is very entertaining, is just almost a whisper compared to that stage show. Sure. Yeah, because the stage show is so much more physical, Okay, I think would be. Yeah. Kelly, tell us about your character. <laughs> Um, my character is Poppy. Poppy is an assistant stage manager. She's very sensitive and very emotional, and it's all Brandon's fault. <laughs> um, his, I'm sorry. That's what I meant. 
Um, <laughs> so he's, he's Brandon's kind of his character, Michael Caine or whoever, is um, demanding. Yes, and I'm also desperately in love with him. Oh no! Yes. Oh, that complicates things. <laughs> it does, he, but he's not very Welcome nice. Welcome to my life. <laughs> oh, exactly. So yes, Poppy is very emotional, very overly sensitive. Um, I get to master my sobbing, which is not really hard for me. But, <laughs> Good for you. Um, it's just really fun. It's I'm in and out a lot. I, I fortunately don't have to follow anybody up the stairs and back down the stairs. And I, I'm in and out a lot and just kind of have really fun moments. I love it. I'm so happy that I got to be a part of it. You sound like you can relate to your character. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm not in love with Brandon. <laughs> um, <laughs> what? <laughs> um, yes. I mean, very, I'm very, uh, emotionally driven we'll call it that okay yeah okay. yeah no i have i have my feelings are big and they're out there all the time and so yeah this has not been a stretch by any sense <laughs> of the imagination um i like to think i'm a little bit more satisfied and happy than poppy but she'll work on it <laughs> kelly how much stage experience do you have um so theater got me through high school uh -huh. um you know when everybody is athletic and they move on and move up i didn't <laughs> i had a track coach go maybe you want to just stick with the theater and i was like good choice so um so i did that i did that all through high school and um i did a little bit through through college as well and then got married had babies and about 20 years later realized there's a thing called community theater and got involved there and then just in the last year, um, I've been fortunate enough to get a couple parts here in the Footlighters, and I'm just enjoying every minute of it. Mm -hmm. It's so much fun. So a great group of friends, isn't it? I, yeah, it's theater has always been to me. It's just instant family, mm -hmm. and I love that about it. I have kids, and my oldest is involved as well, and that's where he found out who he was because because theater is just such a beautiful community of accepting people and mm -hmm. um, gifts that maybe not your traditional gifts, right. um, you know, when you're a teenager, but hey, you're good at something too. And it's always a community that welcomes everybody. And I do love that about it. Me too. Me yeah. That's why we like to support the arts here on the radio station, because I always thought that the kids who are interested in the arts are the ones who slip through the cracks because you know the the athletic kids they get the praise and 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 the smart kids the ones who get the A's all the time they get the scholarships and and uh, I think it's extremely important I think theater teaches so much that's something out that maybe sports doesn't even teach mm -hmm. you're uh, Julie's nodding her head at me right now so yeah. I, I can't tell you how many times I thanked Mike Vilkins for his commitment you know to um, to music and to band and to instruments and to kids and giving kids a, a place where they belong yeah definitely some of the skills that they learn and develop through theater actually goes on to really help them in many areas of their lives getting along with a group being able to work in community uh, being able to speak in front of people self-awareness mm -hmm. um, and and you can get some of those skills from athletics and sports too but this is just another avenue for kids that might not be as athletically gifted or and some of them are i mean some kids just happen to do well in several different areas <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. yeah but i think too um you know as an actress you you're accountable to the rest of the cast you're accountable to your director but if you if you mess up or you don't prepare or you don't work at it you're not just letting yourself down and that's true in life too yeah you know exactly yeah so brandon how many plays have you acted in Fantastic question. <laughs> um, counting murder mysteries? Yes. I would say probably 20. Oh, my. Um, this is my 10th year in Footlighters, so I'm I'm very excited to be celebrating that as, as the 10th year. Um, and I just get more and more involved the older I get until I start aging out of parts, I guess. <laughs> With that gorgeous head of hair, how could you possibly? <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, they've they done so much work together that they can finish one another's sentences. <laughs> you figuring that out, Rich? Noticed. Uh -huh. Yes. Jay, what's what's been your favorite role to date? Oh, man. Uh, if my wife is listening to this, then I have to say Willy Wonka, because she'll say that was her favorite. <laughs> um, honestly, uh, it was a, a little bit smaller, but probably the most fun I've ever had. Uh, and it was also because my own mother didn't recognize me on stage initially awesome. when I played Carmen Gia in the producers back in like 2018 uh, 
my my wife was sitting next to my mom. I came out for the first time as Carmen Gia, did a whole bunch of antics, left the stage, and my wife leaned or my mother leaned over to my wife and said, "When's Jay gonna be coming out?" <laughs> <laughs> and my, my wife was like, that dude in the wig that pranced across stage, that was your son. So that was a lot of fun. Everything I've done with Footlighters has just, it's been a blast. It's, You're like a chameleon, though, isn't he, Julia? He is. He's a character actor. So it's fun to have Jay in your cast because you can throw quite a few things. I mean, I joke about it, but I've cast him as women. Um, <laughs> I've cast him as old I've cast him as young we put different wigs on him so I, we just keep coming up with creative you know avenues for Jay to express himself what is the, the role oh, I don't know that I have it's, I've heard that before I don't know about you Brandon I've heard other actors talk about like their bucket list of roles things they really want to do whatever I didn't necessarily grow up as a theater nerd like I didn't wasn't interested or I always wanted to be a voice actor, but I never thought about theater or acting, acting. And uh, so for me, it, it's, I'm on the play selection committee and Julie will send us stuff to consider. And, and I'm writing her back. What is this? I've never heard of this play. And she's like, Oh my gosh, are you kidding me? This thing is well known. And I'm like, ah, I had no idea. So <laughs> I don't know that I necessarily have anything that I'm like dying to play, to be completely honest with you. Mm -hmm. Brandon, what about you? Yeah. For me? Oh, I, I would say have to say that it would be Sam and Mamma Mia <laughs> would be the role that I've always wanted and loved and... Dude. That sounds like such a boring role. I, don't, oh, it was I can't fantastic. imagine anybody would want music. to do that. It's got who'd, wonderful. I, I just, who'd want to play that? You'd have to have chemistry with the main person, though, I feel I like guess. I feel like you should probably be bald to play that role. Yep. Yeah, apparently it helps, yes. <laughs> I did. There's a little tension. <laughs> so you tried out for a role that you didn't get. Is I what did, okay. and the person sitting next to me, Jay Simon, got it. Oh, boy. Um, Julie gave it to him. So... <laughs> It's you should see the looks on other faces. <laughs> we really need a webcam, don't we? We do. We do. This is not a new conversation. I can tell. I can tell. But also, what Brandon is not mentioning is they both wanted to be Trunchbull and Matilda. Yes. yes. And Brandon. Oh, I'm sorry. That's my bucket list. I really want to play <laughs> Agatha Trunchbull, but I didn't get the chance. Wow. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> the joke is, if you're a male in community theater, you will never not be in a play. Um, right. Because generally speaking, there aren't as many men as women. So these two, we we females don't really care to listen to them. Wine, wine, wine. Yeah. So Kelly, um, <laughs> there is someone out there um, that's thinking, I, want, I might want to put my toe in the lake. I might want to try out for a role, but I'm intimidated and I don't know if I'm good enough. What would you tell somebody like that? Oh, goodness. I would always encourage anybody um, because, and especially we have a show coming up, Our Town, that's going to have a bunch of roles and it's going to, you're not going to have to necessarily be, I, I want to be the lead. You can come and experience being on stage. And I think once you're out there, a lot of times people go, oh, you know, okay, this is a little scary, but it's actually really fun. Um, and you just don't know until you try it. And we all get nervous, and right. you know, you. But there's something about it that brings some of us back. And if you don't know, you have to try it. It's you feel amazing afterwards. You you hear laughter from the audience, and you know that you've made people's nights. You've given people something to look forward to and laugh about and talk about in the car on the way home. And um, I would I would always say just go for it. Be brave and you know, if you don't like it, you don't have to do it again. But again, right. our, our show coming up um, would be a great one to audition for. Okay. Speaking of auditions, I don't want to put anybody on the spot here, but hopefully someone at the table, Jay Simon, knows the dates and the times and the locations of the auditions for I'm our I'm so town. glad Kelly brought that up because yeah. I do want to give that a shout out. So Meg Santangelo and Sally Goggin are co-directing Our Town which Julie can tell you, because I had never heard of it, is like an 85-year-old play that is like spectacular and, and it, it's, it's a like classic. It's play and... everybody should know. <laughs> <laughs> Except for me, obviously. And me. Um, <clears throat> but it's, uh, the, uh, the auditions are going to actually be this opening, our opening weekend for Noises Off. So January 14th and 15th. So Sunday the 14th from 4 to 6 p.m. Uh, Monday the 15th from 6 to 8 p.m. And those auditions will be held at our new building, which is on Walker Avenue, just north of Boone Road. So if you go to north end of town and you go west 
down Boone Road, uh, where the Habitat for Humanity Restore is, the entrance to there is Walker Avenue. And as you go past it, you'll see the building on your left with three big doors. Uh, I think it's 3841, maybe, Walker Avenue. I hope that's right. Is there any any signage yet, or is it There's no kind signage of a, quite yet? Kind yeah, of a so nondescript building at this point. If you know where the Veterans Memorial Park is, okay. it's it, that's beyond our building. So oh, okay. You're going to be in the it's, middle. It's okay. It's on that same that same road going back the there. Put the later's trailer out front or something. Sure. Something. Yeah. yeah. We well, we need to. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Look for the the first billboard on your left at the end of the airport. It's right across the street from where the entrance is. But okay. um, but you can also go to. Uh, uh, oh, I hope it's there. I'll make sure it's there by the time this airs. CadillacFootlighters dot com. Uh, look for auditions, and there'll be a link to the audition hub. You can get more information about the play, about the various characters, and as Kelly pointed out, it needs around twenty five plus people. Um, so a, there's a large number of roles of all different types. A great opportunity to dip your toe at the right in, in the theater. If it's something you just want to try, yeah, a lot of different age ranges. We need uh, younger folks. We need older folks. Um, and uh, you fill out that audition hub, show up to either one or both of those nights, and uh, please do come out. Because, that, again, that's a show that's beloved if you know it. And <laughs> which, I, I, I'm which told you it's beloved. I didn't. I but see, that's I'm, I'm. I have a feeling that a lot of people that maybe haven't heard the name it doesn't that once they hear about what it's about and the story of it, they'll be like, oh yeah, I think my high school did that because mm-hmm. it's been done yeah. in high schools across the U.S. for years yeah. and years. Right, right. Julie, if if money was no object, <laughs> there was a donor out there that wanted to write you guys a great big check because of the work that you're doing in the community, what what would the Footlighters do with a large sum of money? I think our number one priority is probably our own performance space. Okay. Um, we love the auditoriums we are able to use in the different locations we've been able to utilize in the community, but there are so many um, impediments to performing when it's not your own space right. in terms of like just this building, this huge set, and then having to take it all apart and rebuild it and being able to rehearse on the stage itself, but also even just scheduling Mm -hmm. because sharing- The facility belongs to the kids first and foremost, right? right. So, you know, we we kind of try really hard to spread our season out in good times, but a lot of times the dates choose themselves for us because of what's available and what's not available. I see. So, um, you know, it would it would open a whole new avenue for us to have our own space that we can schedule how we want and when we want and build what we want and and be able to instead of tearing a set apart and chucking you know a bunch of the stuff, we could actually save some of it for future use, which we will be able to do now because we have this this beautiful building. Um, but boy, to have something it's it feels like a pipe dream to me. But I think that is our ultimate goal is is to have our own space that we can perform in and call our own and be a hub for arts growth, you know, in the theater um, field throughout the area. Well, and you you would collaborate too. Correct. Uh, Joe, yeah. Joe talked yeah. Um, to us a little bit about that, didn't he, Rich? He did. About how this space could be used for other groups. Sure. That are related yeah. to the yep, arts. Yeah. That, that an auditorium would be especially helpful for the symphony or the dancing. Mm-hmm. Um, Things. So, and yeah. the only difference is that everybody else would have to schedule around uh, you. Yes, yes. Well, it, it would be know. really nice to control that. <laughs> yeah. Well, you, you know. could do things like extend your run. Yeah. Right? Like yeah. we did Mamma Mia, we did seven shows, which was a large number for the time. But the way that was attended, we could have done that two more right. weekends easily. Mm-hmm. But it's a matter of space and, and whatnot. So I have found in, in our community that if we can just demonstrate a need, that that need will be met. We're we're known Cadillac is known to be very collaborative and generous, um, and and you guys have such incredible momentum with the quality of product that you are putting out into the community. You've really upped your game. What would you say about that, Dr. Peltier? I will say that I, I, I agree. I am honored and and privileged to be a part of Footlighters as it is right now. Um, it, it the quality of the directing of the sets of the actors of the tech 
it's just it feels like we're at a jumping point jumping off point of of, of something amazing mm-hmm. uh, i think that this building is a representative uh, representation of that um, and yeah uh, the the board's goal is always to have our own performance space um, because we feel like we are a big part of the community that 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 is uh, very important for just the whole town right absolutely I mean you, we could even use this as a recruiting tool. You know, we're, we've, we're constantly recruiting professionals to the community. And um, it's like, okay, well, we've got, you know, a pretty downtown. And we've got these two lakes and we've got strong industry and our faith community is. And by the way, if you're interested in theater, there is an amazing group of people you're going to want to be a part of, you know. Well, when we had Joe on a few weeks ago, he actually mentioned the fact that that was a that was a draw for him to come to Cadillac. A requirement. Wherever he was going, they were going to have community theater. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'll tell you what, he saddled up that horse and went for it, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> Love you, Joe. <laughs> um, can we talk about some of the other shows on deck in 2024 and wet our appetite, please? Sure. Um, Jay can fill me in if I'm getting any dates wrong, or maybe he can um, add on to what I say. But the next one, like we mentioned, is Our Town, which um, the performances are, I think it opens March 8 and 9, um, and then the following weekend. And that show will be performed at the the high school auditorium in Cadillac. So that will be our first show back in their space since their renovation. So that will be kind of exciting, yeah. too. Um and that's a play that is not a musical. So, you know, back to the auditions for that, you won't have to sing. Um, and then following Our Town, we have Hello, Dolly, which is um, an older traditional musical. Um, and that will be held in June. Auditions will probably be the end of March, beginning of April. Uh, Kelly Simons is directing that, and I am um, assisting her on Hello, Dolly. Um, and then the next one after that is one that I'm particularly excited about, and that is the teen show Newsies. Okay. Um, I had the privilege of directing Newsies um, in a high school, and it was one of the best shows we ever put together. There's so much energy, and it's a great, great script, and it's super fun for teens. So that's going to be a super fun one. I think Melissa Kendall is directing that one. Um, I think Amy Swanson is involved, too, because when I directed it before, she was the music director, and I think she's on sure. board for doing it again. Right. Um, so, yeah, that those shows are all big, big I mean, we knew with our 60th season we wanted to do some special stuff. We talked about dreaming big, grabbing for the things that, you know, we weren't sure we could ever do. And one of those was Noises Off because it's such a huge set um, and you need a big space and you need to. And we were like, can we pull it off? Uh, And we decided to go for it. Uh, And I think Hello, Dolly is a more traditional, older musical that we were thinking would be a nice addition. And Our Town is, of course... Um, contrary to what these guys <laughs> are saying here, um, generally a well-known, written by Thorn Wilder, um, traditional play that's done a lot. And Newsies is just, it's a fun one. Oh, boy. I'm, I'll be there. All of them. <laughs> so just to be clear, the dates on those, Hello, Dolly is mid-June. Uh, the weekends of June 14th and the 21st. And then Newsies is the end of July, early August are the performance dates. So take those dates go back eight nine ten weeks or so and that's probably when auditions will be so but so so stay tuned to our socials that's right so jay um because you're on the selection committee i have a question does there ever is there ever a debate when when you're when you're picking your plays how does that work (laughs) he's smiling everybody (laughs) so he uh, just failed the poker test (laughs) No, there's there's never a debate because Julie is the chair of the selection <laughs> committee. Julie gets her way, everybody. No, no that's that's no. yeah, that's not true. Uh, no, there's some. We actually have a, a community member or two, I think, on that that committee as well. So it's not just board members or just Footlighters uh, members, um, because we want input from all over the place. And so I, I mean, I, in a little bit of a, a way, I think I'm I was added to it 
because of the fact that I don't know what half of these are. So, <laughs> um, so I don't have any kind of preconceived notion sure. of the show either. So when we're looking at this, these choices, you know, it, it's just helpful to kind of not know. And then these community members are looking at it more from a what would we find entertaining sort of standpoint as well. And then Julie, of course, Julie's primarily responsible for kind of bringing a selection to our attention and saying, here's some thoughts. Right. Mm-hmm. And then we'll we'll narrow it down. Um, you know, in general, we'll have a junior, sh- uh, sorry, youth now. We'll have a, a lower youth and an upper youth show. So the 8 to a 13-year-olds and then the high schoolers. And then we'll have uh, four shows that are adult or, or mix of kids and adults. And we typically are trying to do two musicals and two straight plays or non-musicals. So, um, and, and as Joe likes to say, uh, a, a healthy theater doesn't just do the, the the big classics that you're familiar with. A healthy theater will will use uh, opportunity to bring about you know bring in some shows that, that maybe you've never heard of. So for every hour town that everybody's apparently familiar with, <laughs> <clears throat> we'll do something like Too Much Light Makes the Baby Go Blind, like we did mm-hmm. last year that right. that nobody has heard of, and it just gives an opportunity to show the community something that they've never seen, something that's a little bit different, and it lets us some of these smaller shows let us use venues that we haven't before. Charming North venue for that show in particular, uh, using the Elks for Steel Magnolias, for example. So. Um, it's it's a it's a good mix, and Julie does a really good job, obviously, with her history directing uh, thirty shows. Come on, you've been doing this for eighty four years. How can that only be thirty shows? I look um, really young. Yes, you do. Right. I know. Right. Uh, but that's that's she brings a good mix of of choices uh, that that we then kind of you know settle on. So I wouldn't say there's there's much debate. Uh, it's a it's a healthy discussion. We'll okay. go with that. You guys are ambitious, aren't they? Absolutely. And enriching lives. And in the time we have left, we need to go back to the who, what, when, and where of Noises Off. All right. Where to get tickets. Absolutely. Where to attend. Uh, Ellen Boss Performing Arts Center in McBain High School. Beautiful venue. Just a great place. The acoustics are amazing. Not a bad seat in that place. Um, January 12th, 13th, 19th, and 20th at 7 p.m. January 20th at 2 p.m. That's the one matinee, the second weekend on Saturday. Tickets are available at cadillacfootlighters.com slash tickets. They will also be at our outlets. I expect those to be at our outlets uh, when you hear this. They should be available. Uh, Brinks Custom Art and Framing and Horizon Books. They are $10 in advance from our outlets. They are $11 online, and they are $12 at the door. Perfect. Jay, Brandon, Julie, and Kelly from the Footlighters. Thank you very much for coming on the show. Break a leg, everybody. We appreciate you all. Join us next week. More local chat, same time, same station. On Cadillac Unscripted, sponsored by Independent Bank on 1079 CDY.